guys, welcome back to Embers and Ash. My name's Ashley, if you didn't know, and today we're talking about pantry organization. So like everyone else in this season, I have been obsessed with the home edit. I put it on as just like a background show as I was just going about my day, and then I got so hooked and obsessed over it, and I was like, I have to do my kitchen like everyone else right now. So I've been spending the past couple weeks working on my pantry, um, totally reorganizing it. I also want to say that I used to be kind of against organization just because often people organize instead of minimizing like they see all this mess in their house and they're like oh I just need to organize it when really you need to minimize it because organization only works when it's like functional and manageable not just like a bunch of stuff in boxes so I've always been a little against organization but the show really showed me that organization and minimalism go hand in hand and with all your minimized stuff having an organized system really makes a difference especially in your pantry because you can only minimize your pantry so much because you just have food and you need to eat the food not throw it away right so anyways that's the whole intro oh also I wanted to mention that like since the home edit coming out uh, lots of people have been posting like organization videos and it's so funny when they're like yeah I just got like inspired to organize my house for no good reason when you know that it was like because of the home edit they're just not admitting it. Anyways, let's get into what I've done for my pantry. So here it is behind me. I'll take you shelf by shelf. Um, it's also not perfect. I've been tinkering with it for the past couple weeks to try and see what works and what doesn't work and what I can change. There's still some trouble areas that I was thinking maybe you guys could help me out with. Um, any suggestions are welcomed here because I definitely don't have all the solutions. So anyways, Let's get into it. So we'll start with my lower shelf. My struggle with this pantry is that it's so deep that I can't just get organizers because they all come like 12 inches long and this is like double that. And so I don't want to have things hidden in the back, right? So I kind of just have all my canned goods just in here. It's kind of organized by food, not really, but I don't think I can do any better because it just is what it is. But the one thing I have going for me is this little setup here. So I have all my garlic in this cute little um, basket from Ikea. I'll also link everything below, like all the containers that I'm using. Oh, I forgot to say, um, I'm doing this on a budget. So I looked, oh my gosh, I have so much to say about this. I'm doing this on a budget, like on a budget, because when I went to look at buying containers, I didn't realize how freaking expensive they are. Like one plastic container for $20, are you kidding me? And then the people on the show fill their kitchen with them. Like that's hundreds of dollars. So I've been trying to find like alternatives. I've bought a couple items that are a bit more pricey, but there's a reason for it. And then a lot of the items are cheaper. So that'll help you hopefully. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. This little basket from Ikea is actually a um, napkin holder and I use it for garlic because I thought it was like the perfect size. And then behind here I have this wire basket for my potatoes and onions. I heard somewhere that you're not supposed to store potatoes and onions together. I don't know why, but I'm doing it anyways. Um, and this little basket I just got at HomeSense because it's discounted. Um, and I think that little setup works because you can see everything. So yeah, that's that one. So the next shelf up is my baking shelf. And I say my when really Josh does all the baking, I just organized it for him. So I found what is working for us is I have everything available up front and then all my back stock I have in these baskets back here. So I feel like I should flip you around so that we can address this better. So as you can see here, I just have these glass jars for all my baked goods and then I used my little labeler to label everything. Um, this is especially important for all these powders here that look the same, like the baking powder, icing sugar, baking soda, cornstarch. Vital that you label them because you will get mixed up. Um, so these square-ish jars I got from Trader, not Trader Joe's, what's that other place in America? Target. I got these from Target years ago. Um, and then these rounded ones are from Ikea. And they're great because they're like $6. These ones I think are maybe $4. I can't remember. So affordable compared to other options. And then over here, I just have a mason jar full of um, 
yeast. And this guy here with the bamboo lid, I also got from Ikea. I think this was a little bit more expensive, but it's super cute. And the reason why this one is different is because Josh always complains that he can't fit a one cup measuring cup in these guys. So I got a wider mouth container for flour. And then in the back, I just have these Ikea baskets that I've had for years that's holding all my back stock of these products and other things like cocoa powder, um, condensed milk, just things that we don't really use that often. And on this side, I have a bunch of, if you can see that, that's all the um, like instant cake mixes um, because that's the only way I know how to bake. So yeah, these are all my like Betty Crocker easy mix stuff. I feel like it's really important that I show you all my back stock and how like realistic and functional this is because a lot of times people show their beautiful pantries and they don't actually work well or they're hiding a lot of stuff. Um, so I wanna show you everything. Um, I also have apple cider vinegar back here that didn't really fit in my row. I honestly use that for cleaning my hair, not baking, but anyways, it's on the baking shelf. Yeah, so that's the baking shelf. Oh, I should show you, because we obviously have like more flour, um, the, the brown sugars I keep in these bins, the oats I keep in these bins, but the sugar and flour, I obviously have more than what's available, and that's actually stored down below. So this, this cupboard is not very organized. This is in a green angle, but that's fine. So this holds like our beak keeping equipment, we have some frames here, some burlap for smoking the bees, some sugar syrup for the bees. Um, yeah, this is not organized, but that's fine. That's a project for another day. I just wanted to show you that, oh my gosh, you can't even see this. Sorry, this is like an awful angle, but uh, down here I have these wire bins that hold just like flowers. Josh has like seven different types of flower for like different things. I don't understand at all, um, but we have all our flowers there, um, pickling vinegar, and then our sugar and other flour, all stored down here, out of sight, out of mind. Okay, so this is my, um, carbs shelf, I guess. Um, I have all these beautiful jars that are all from Ikea. These again were very cheap um, and they look beautiful. Like I have all my different types of pasta and then I have my brown basmati and white basmati rice. Um, and then over here I have all of my Annie's in this cute container. Is this even in focus? There we go. <laughs> uh, now you can see it. So this is one of those um, home edit containers. It was a bit more expensive, but it works great, obviously, for mac and cheese. And if you couldn't tell, this is all of Josh's cooking supplies, and this is my cooking supplies. Um, and then I wanna show you what's behind it. So you can see here, I have like Mr. Noodles, um, quinoa, I have these kind of noodles. It's all stuff that we don't use as often. And then I would also keep any back stock for these noodles back there. Um, this is one of the cases where the deep shelf works really well because I can have everything up front that I need to see and all the back stock behind it. And Rook is squeaking over there if you can hear him. So yeah, when it's all lined up, it's super beautiful, but it's not just junk in the back, it's my back stock, so. So yeah, that's that shelf. And then at the very top, I have these two crates that were from Ikea also quite affordable. And this is all my like canned good back stock. So in here I have a bunch of like pickles, canned peaches, uh, stuff like that. And then in this one I have a bunch of yerba mate that my husband um, uses. So yeah, that's that. Okay, so that is this pantry. I have two more areas to show you. So let's move on to those. Okay, now we're gonna move on to my spice cabinet. Da, da, da. So obviously here are all of my spices. I've had these little containers for years now. I got them at Target. Um, I'm not a huge fan of them anymore. I would like to replace them, but it can be expensive. So that's what I have for now. I also have these little guys that I thrifted a while ago and then all the ones that come in containers are back there. And then I have all my like commonly used oils here. I got olive oil, canola, and then this isn't an oil, but balsamic and my um, pepper grinder back there. These I got at uh, Ikea, pretty cheap. And then if you can tell, it's all tiered. I'm not gonna disassemble everything, but uh, this is just a wire rack that I got at HomeSense for 
like five bucks. Okay, moving up, all I have up here is just a box with all of my backstock spices. I find this system works really well for us. Whenever one of these is empty, I can look up there to refill it. And if there's any extra spices that don't come in these little containers, I store them up there. And then at the very top, um, you're not gonna be able to see it very well, but that's just a bunch of like Josh's stuff. So he likes to make homemade chai tea. He also makes like um, rubs for roasts and stuff. So he has his mortar and pestle, um, some black tea mix, and just extra stuff. It's kind of like his shelf. I forgot to mention a little tip for you guys. So for anything that's holding oil, if you have this kind of swing top lid, you want to make sure that you put your label on the side that the swing top goes to when it's open like this, so that when you're pouring out your oil and it drips down, it doesn't drip on your label, because I've had that happen before and the oil will just wipe off your label, which is no fun. So just make sure to have it on the opposite side that you pour from. Okay, and the last cupboard, which I'm most excited about. Da -da! So on this side, I have my chai tea, my like instant chai tea mix, and it comes in again, one of those home edit containers um, that are super useful. Obviously I need to restock. <laughs> and then this is my rooibos tea. This is kind of the only tea that I ever really use unless I'm sick. So I just got this super cute jar from Amazon. It has this little cork ball. I thought it was so freaking cute. And I have my vanilla extract here. You might be wondering why I'm keeping my vanilla extract in this cupboard. And that's because I add it to like every hot drink, cold drink that I make. So it just makes more sense for me to have it in here. This little guy was from the dollar store. It was a dollar 25, great deal. And then this one, this is one of those Ikea containers, but I actually thrifted this for I think $2 and just cleaned it out. And this obviously holds all my coffee. Moving over, I have my dandy blend and my hot chocolate. I don't use hot chocolate as much anymore. Uh, dandy blend, I drink this like all the time, especially in the fall and winter, in the evening. It's caffeine free, it's super good for you, and it's delicious, so I love having that available. And then this is a tea box, which has saved me so much space because all the tea bags that come pre-packaged, I don't have to keep all their boxes. So I'll show you how this works. Oh, first I should also mention, I keep my honey back here because I don't use it that often, but sometimes I like to sweeten my drinks. So it's just back there. This is, um, like fancier barrel aged honey. I use this for like a charcuterie board, whereas this is the honey from my own beehives and I use this for sweetening drinks. So this box is super cute. It was a little bit more pricey, but it was worth it for me because of the function. And it just has all these little compartments for all your tea. So perfect. And then here I have just kind of backstock tea or boxes of tea that don't come prepackaged like this. They're um, just the tea bags. So like I have my rooibos tea, my extra dandy blend, and then like I said, just boxed tea. Yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> oh, also this is from HomeSense discounted. And these guys are from Ikea, just like the flower container. Okay, so the next shelf here is all my like snacks. And this is the shelf that I've had the most trouble with, trying to figure out how, figure out? <laughs> trying to figure out how to organize it best. So on this corner, I have a bunch of granola bars um, for Josh for work, and also just a chocolate bar. Um, this is one of those home edit containers. Again, it was like $15, so not a great deal, but I got excited and bought them. <laughs> and then here I just have a container with containers of nuts. Oh, I have <laughs> shelled pistachios and unshelled pistachios. Um, I have popcorn kernels, some candy, and some like trail mix in the back there. And then over here, I just don't know what to do because I don't wanna just canister all my snacks because snacks are always changing and I don't wanna have like designated containers for each snack, that doesn't seem practical. So it just kinda is what it is right now. If you have any suggestions, let me know. And then finally up top, I have extra spices again. And the difference is, is that those are the like bulk spices. Um, that don't fit so nicely in the other container. Hopefully I'll work through those and be able to redesignate that container to something else. We just have a lot of spices apparently. And then over here I have all my extra honey that is my backstock. 
a bunch of mint or dehydrated mint leaves that Josh made last year and some coconut oil. And that's that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing how I'm organizing my pantry and cupboards. Um, again, if you have any advice, I am here with open ears, very excited to hear what you guys have to say. It's such a fun time reorganizing your pantry and making it functional and beautiful. I never realized I needed this in my life. If you guys liked this video and you want more content on kitchen organization and decluttering, I actually recently came out with a video on 10 areas you might have forgotten to declutter in your kitchen, so check that one out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!